Deno and React can be combined in a number of ways. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at how we can import our React package directly into our Deno application and compile some of the React components that we have straight to a web server. We've already done a previous video of using Create React App to serve up static files for React, but this is a little bit different. And we're going to serve up those directly inside Deno. We have some limitations when we're using SSR, and I'll point these out along the way. But if you don't know who I am, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development. So if you haven't already, hit like and subscribe, and we're going to jump straight into it. We'll start by creating a new file, and I'm going to assume you already have Deno installed. But if you don't, then there's a tutorial for that. We'll create server.js and we'll import our packages in here. And what we want to do is import React and React Server DOM. And both of these allow us to serve up our application through a web server, which we'll use as Oak. So let's import React from the online URL. And this online URL is located over here in HTTPS dev.jspm.io and forward slash react at the version, which is 16.13.1. We also want to import React DOM server. So let's import that too. And this will allow us to convert our React code into a string to serve up to our React application on the web server. So this has more or less the same syntax, but in case of this import, we actually pass in react dash DOM and we grab the forward slash server from there. With these two imported, we can actually start creating our React application. Before we serve it though, we need to import Oak as well. So let's import the application function here from the Oak library. And Oak is just located over here at DenoLAN. So let's pass in Denoland forward slash X forward slash Oak mod.ts. And this will import that. And in order to use this, we'll have a look at assigning a port a little bit later, but let's create a simple React application and maybe a functionless component, maybe something simple like function app. And in here, we'll have a simple render. And this render or this return will essentially just print out a small hello world. So let's pass in some React code in here going hello and then maybe a span of world. And this is pretty simple React code in here. What we're going to do now is create our web server. And for our web server, we're going to const app a new application. And this application will be the web server itself. For this, we need to have something that's re returned to our client as a response. So we're going to do app use. And in here, we'll pass in CTX, which stands for context and we'll define a response. So we'll do it CTX response body. And in here, we'll pass in some basic HTML. This is just the building blocks for normal HTML. So I'm just going to do doc type is HTML, uh, maybe HTML in here to open the tag and maybe body in here to open that tag too. And we can pass some more stuff in here, such as maybe div uh, ID equals root and just pass that in. In here, we can define our React application, but right now we need to render it to string. So to be able to do that, we're going to pass in const body equals, and we're going to call react DOM server. And with this, we want to call the method render to string. And what we're going to do is we're going to render the app to string. And this will be defined as a body variable here. And this variable we're going to print into our response. With this all done, we can now listen to our server by calling await app.listen and listening to it on maybe port 8000. This is now all the building blocks for our application done and it's ready to go and test out now. So let's open up our console here and run deno run pass in, pass in allow dash net to allow our network flag to listen to that port and pass in the server name, which is server.js. Now we will get an error in here and this is because we're using JSX syntax. So we're going to need to rename this file to server.jsx. And once we do and we save that and we rerun the application now, we'll see that it runs. 
And what we can do is we can open up a web browser here and go to port 8000. We'll see that our hello world renders, which is really cool. If we have a look and inspect the code, we can see that we've got our React DOM in here inside our root. And this is really cool. Now that this is all working, let's see if we can make this application a little bit more interesting and see the limitations of what we can and can't do when we're doing server side rendering on React inside Deno. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component here called maybe uh, maybe a class component even. So I know they're old school and people use other components these days, but what I'm going to do is create a class component here called uh, maybe list items. And this will extend react.component. And let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to pass this into our application here below our hello world. And right now it's not going to do anything in particular, but I just want to see if this will work. And when we run this, we should see that it should work. And we are printing out this text input component. In here, we could change this to a UL and a LI here, and we can go item one, two, three, four, five, um, and see that that will essentially render out just fine. But sometimes this isn't just the only thing we want to do. We want to sometimes add some functionality. So in this case, I might want to add some state and maybe I'll do display is false. And what we'll do is we'll do a little button in here. And for this button, which we'll pass in here as a regular class tag or just a tag, sorry, uh, we'll do toggle on off and we'll create a function in here. So on click for this button, we'll actually call a function that'll set state. So we'll do this dot set state and we'll set display to be the opposite of what it currently is. So we'll do this dot state dot display. And what we want to do is we want to see what the actual display currently is. So we'll pass in maybe a string in here of what the current value is. So I'm just going to pass it in here like this and we'll do this dot state dot display will be item one. Then item two can be a variable that will decide whether we render that essential list item depending on whether display is false or positive. So we'll do this dot state dot display. Um, and if it's true, then we'll display the list item. Otherwise we won't display anything. So ideally this third, the second button or the list item will display only if we toggle. So let's rerun this demo application. Now, the first thing we can see is that we are getting here the item for displaying um, we, we are getting the false. So we are definitely getting the state passed in, which is really cool. But if we select this button, we'll see that nothing's happening. And this might be confusing to a bit of people, but the reason this is so is because we're actually compiling all of this straight into a string here when we're rendering it. And this means that it's losing all its functionality. And if we want to bring that back in, we have to rehydrate our React application. And to do that, we actually have to build it and compile it and serve it in as a static file. And I've done a previous video on adding create react app into Oak and other libraries and serving it statically. And this might be something that you can combine with server side rendering, but this is just the basics of how you can implement react into Deno. And while there are some limitations, this is just one example of it. And I'm sure there will be more as Deno slowly improves, but hopefully you guys like this. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm trying to do more on Deno. And if you guys have ideas on topics you want me to cover or different examples of libraries that you might not know how to utilize, then let me know and I can do videos on those too. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this one. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.